In the last couple of days, there's been a few news articles that have popped up, re-quoting some words said about Battlefield 6 and next-gen games being made by EA. The quote comes from the EA Play 2020 livestream that happened last week, and it revealed some of the technology behind Battlefield 6 and what DICE is looking to achieve with the title. But it stopped short of officially confirming or, or even teasing the name or setting of the next game in the franchise. This left a lot of people quite disappointed considering the leaks and rumours that had been pointing to EA Play as a destination for this reveal, but it wasn't to be this time around. I think a lot of people personally didn't truly expect it to be revealed, but they were disappointed all the same when it didn't appear. Now this quote that's been doing the rounds, I've watched back the portion of the live stream where it's come from just to be sure of what was actually said, as opposed to reading solely the headline of these articles, and the quote kind of troubles me a little bit, but I also understand it at the same time because I can see why EA would make a quote like this. The full quote is as follows. Our studios are taking their crazy ambitious ideas and making them real. And this is in reference to the next generation consoles. The reason a statement like this makes me nervous can be covered by a few different points, so we'll walk through those first of all. The first one, I think we've been here before with Battlefield. Battlefield 4, that was a title released by EA and DICE as a launch game for the next generation consoles, the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. It featured some huge steps forward in graphical fidelity and performance alongside new gameplay complexities that took advantage of that new gaming hardware, the power that the consoles had on offer. And there's no doubting that those additions, things like Levolution, they were very impressive because Levolution really scaled up the previous destruction mechanic and it made it feel next gen. However, at the same time, the game launched in a terrible state without any real polish applied to the overall experience. We had in-game events like Levolution that would crash the game client when they were activated, completely negating the point of having it in the game at launch if it didn't work properly. We had server performance issues, we had a myriad of bugs and glitches, you name it, Battlefield 4 pretty much had it. The project itself did push boundaries in a lot of different ways, and it sought to take advantage of the new console launch to basically stand out from the crowd as this all-singing, all-dancing FPS title that, perhaps for the first year or so, could be a game that any player would point to as a sign of what next-gen really meant. But what ended up happening was all those new innovative ideas and implementations they ended up clashing with the core fundamentals of Battlefield, and it created a buggy mess that was really infuriating to play for the first six to eight months after launch. The focus appeared to be on these crazy ambitious ideas, taking the quote from Battlefield 6 and applying it to Battlefield 4, as opposed to nailing down the core gameplay experience and polishing that up with the new power and overheads that the consoles had. Look at that scenario, and now start to look at the one forming around Battlefield 6, and I can already see a similarity in the narrative here. And you can see a similarity to Battlefield 5 as well, where if you go back to before the game was announced, EA CEO Andrew Wilson said that the next Battlefield game was visually stunning and deeply immersive. That was the quote that was going around in the news at that point in time. Unfortunately, I don't feel like either of those points really turned out to be true. Battlefield 5 arguably looked worse than its predecessor, Battlefield 1, because DICE pushed Fidelity so far that the game became a grainy, pixelated mess at anything beyond 50 meters vision range, and that made it really difficult to see what was happening at longer distances. And it was about as far as deeply immersive as you could get because the take on World War II the development team chose created a massive disconnect between what people knew about World War II and what was being shown to them about World War II in this video game. Safe to say, we've been here before with Battlefield games, and we know that DICE as a development studio, at least in the last few games that they've produced, they've often sacrificed gameplay quality for something flashy or eye-catching. They basically put graphics over gameplay. 
Of course, games do need to stand out. There needs to be some things that catch people's eyes. But there have been some quite egregious examples from DICE in the last few years where gameplay really has taken second place to graphical fidelity. And pretty much most of the time, that's not a great scenario to be in. And then secondly, we're going to take a look at this from a business angle, because I think a statement like this does have some business-related motives. The statement that EA has made for Battlefield 6, it sounds like one of those statements that you make when you want to inspire market confidence in the products that you're making within your company. EA is a publicly traded company, they have shareholders, and they want to make sure that those shareholders are as happy as possible and they keep their money within the business. And if shareholders do that, then there's an outward display of confidence from that company, and perhaps more people will look to invest their money within EA. EA is a business after all, and businesses exist to make money. A statement like this, it creates headlines, it creates YouTube videos like this one, it creates a buzz on social media, it creates interest in general. And considering most of EA's next-gen titles aren't launching until next year, 2021, at this point, EA needs to keep interest high in what they're doing and shareholders happy through a period where the company has chosen to launch less titles than they would normally have, instead opting to push a lot of those titles into next year. And the reason they're doing that is because EA believes there will be more PlayStation 5s and more Xbox Series Xs in people's homes in 2021, ready to download these brand new games. This statement could very well be a general one about the company overall and all the games they're making, as opposed to truly meaning that DICE solely has some wildly outlandish ideas that they want to put in Battlefield 6. When you watch back the live stream, the quote itself is pulled from a segment where EA is talking about all of their next-gen titles that are as yet unreleased or, or unrevealed. So there's certainly a case to be made here that the statement was more of a general one to inspire confidence in all of those next-gen titles, as opposed to only Battlefield 6. So that's why a statement like that makes me a bit nervous. There's a couple of reasons, and I think if you look to the past, that's a big indicator as to what these statements can really mean for a franchise like Battlefield, especially one that's always been built around pushing the boundaries and trying different things. But there's also a side to where I feel that without those kind of ambitious ideas, without that innovation, and without new elements in each game, then the next Battlefield game might well lack ambition. And so if Battlefield 6 didn't go in with a couple of ambitious ideas and didn't try to innovate on what's happened in the past, then we might end up with a game that was a little bit bland overall. If you look to Battlefield 4, again, with Levolution, and you look to Battlefield 1, that took on the World War 1 setting and it brought in more freeform destruction and the behemoths. And even Battlefield 5, that implemented squad reinforcements and, and fortifications. All of these quote-unquote ideas, they made it into the full game, and they did change how each game felt and played. And for a certain period of time, I think all of these elements were quite exciting. If they hadn't been implemented, the Levolution, the Behemoths, the Fortifications, Battlefield as a franchise, with each game release, would largely have been the same thing from 2013 through to 2020, without much real change happening between each game. There are certain franchises that can exist and release each year, where there's only iterative steps taken, and FIFA and the other sports games are probably a really good example of that, but FPS titles, especially ones that want to compete at the top of the tree and hold on to large number of players, they need to be innovating and they need to be evolving to some extent to make each game feel more interesting and different to the last one, to give you a reason to actually go and buy that game over the one that you've just finished playing. But that innovation and that iteration it needs to come as something beyond the core gameplay experience and not at the expense of it. Take Battlefield 5 as the example here. Attrition and physicality. I've spoken about this quite a lot and you probably know what I'm going to say, but I'll be short and sweet here. For me, both of these ideas sounded awesome on paper, but in practice, they really hurt the core Battlefield experience. Attrition gave you less ammo and health, actively downplaying core elements of the Battlefield gameplay experience shooting enemies, and healing yourself and teammates. 
Battlefield 5 implemented a feature that actively discouraged you from shooting enemies and getting into gunfights. And this is a first person shooter game that we're talking about here. And then there's physicality, implementing lock-in animations for actions like arming and disarming bombs, so you can't defend yourself and you would immediately get shot. Lock-in animations for revives that took far too long and left you completely open to attack. Vehicle entry and exit animations that you were unable to cancel or exit once you started them, leaving you completely open to attack. Physicality, again, hurt the gameplay experience in Battlefield 5, and as time went on, DICE went about reducing the impact of it in the game to the point where the next step would have been to completely remove it. Now it wasn't completely removed because physicality was a core part of Battlefield 5 and it was part of the game's identity, but it was scaled back considerably, as was attrition, and that tells me that crazy ambitious ideas of that project, they turned out to be not so great in practice. But they did frame what the game was all about. As I said, they gave it an identity. And if Battlefield 5 hadn't had those features, it would have felt very, very similar to Battlefield 1. And so moving forwards, you can understand why a statement of crazy ambitious ideas is put out there because initially, all ideas are crazy and ambitious if you haven't done them before. But if they turn out to be quite good, then you can use them moving forward in the rest of the franchise. Destruction is probably the biggest example of that. Started in Bad Company, where it wasn't brilliant, but it was definitely different and people could see where it might go. Moving into Battlefield 3 and 4, it was more refined, it was more structured, and then in Battlefield 4 it was opened right up into these big set piece events. Some people liked that, some people didn't. Then moving to Battlefield 1, we went back to more freeform scale, but we had some limitations in place that stopped maps being completely leveled like they were in Bad Company. So destruction had a meaning, but it didn't go too far. And then with Battlefield 5, we got anti-destruction, which is fortifications. And so you can see how that evolution went forward and things were tried and tested and improved over time. And now they're a core part of the Battlefield experience. It was a crazy outlandish idea at some point, but it's now expected as part of Battlefield. But as always, I think it is worth taking your regular truckload of salt with this information or this very brief statement from EA because right now, I think it means very, very little. The game that DICE is working on is far from finished and it's gonna be a while before we truly get any solid information about it. And I still expect we won't hear anything proper until early 2021, March and April, I think, at the very earliest. We've got a long way to go before we find out what the next Battlefield game is. But thanks very much for watching today. Leave me a rating and a comment. It is always appreciated. And I'll catch you all in the next one.